Hey, Paul. How's it going, Fab? Doing good. Yourself? Good. Cool. So today we're going to talk about uh, interviewing salespeople. I know, uh, depending on when you listen to this, I know right now uh, a lot of salespeople, at least in the SaaS and startup world, are getting are losing their jobs. So there's a lot of trimming going on in terms of budgets. So uh, this is for all the companies that are actually looking for people. Um, and kind of the insight I got, and I know it's not uh, for a sales interview, but it's for like a re interviewing RevOps people. And some, some, some guy was like sharing this trick that he, he would just like, uh, you know, before the interview, please, please read this article, but he would purposely put like mis misplace, like remove like one variable on the URL. And his, his thing was just to see like, as a RevOps person has to be like kind of creative and how to try to find a solution problem solution and finding solutions. So it was a little trick that he was like, Oh, somebody's coming back to me saying, I didn't read it because the link was broken. You know, you might not have the right personality traits for, for a RevOps position. So it kind of got me thinking about, uh, and I don't have a lot of experience interviewing for RevOps person. So we'll, we'll stick on the, uh, stick on the sales side of things. Um, you obviously have a lot of experience interviewing salespeople. You've done it in your career. You do it for some of your clients as well. So this is kind of a big thing for you. Um, let's start off with big, like how do you interview salespeople? Well, it's, it is a, uh, it's, it's a good question and it's a pretty broad question and I'm happy it's broad because there's a lot of aspects to interviewing that are common, I think, to all interviews. And I think there's some cool things that when you're interviewing a salesperson or someone who is going to be having a sales role, because it could be leadership or management, um, there is an extra little, uh, an extra little, uh, trick, or I, I don't want to call it a trick, an extra th step that you can take that I think really solidifies everything you do in the interview, but I'm not going to tell you that right now. First, I'm going to tell yeah. you some other stuff first. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I'm teasing the group. So <laughs> the first thing I think you need to do, obviously, when you interview a salesperson is you need to see if they are going to fit within the culture of your enterprise and if you even want to work with this person. Mm -hmm. And so what I suggest to people often is, you know, I, as you know, I work with the sales evaluation that I've developed myself uh, based yeah. on the questions that I've asked my clients uh, to customize that evaluation to find and to sort of weed out um, and include weed out on one side and include the people that we want to talk to at first. So the, the, the evaluation will vary from 20 questions to, you know, 70 questions to see uh, who we're going to talk to. And when you talk to the people for the first time, um, I just ask them, you know, why they think they would be good for this position, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's that goes for any interview. I think any interviewer, the first conversation, you're just seeing, like, do they – do they converse? Do they, are they, are they personable? Do they have a type of character that you like? Right. So then you're deciding right there, well, do we continue or do we not continue? So once they've gone through that step and then you'll do maybe a zoom interview and then you have them in person. So mm -hmm. I think the most important part in interviewing a salesperson after you, of course, you've seen like, do they have the competences or the knowledge that you're looking for? Right. Cause that can be industry knowledge or, whatever their approach, their, their level of education. Um, is it a transactional sale? Is it a consultative sale? So once you know all these things, and let's assume for this conversation that it's a consultative sale, mm -hmm. well, then you're going to talk, you're going to ask the person, you know, you're going to look at their CV and mm -hmm. you're going to maybe ask some questions on what they've done and why they feel they're good. And if it's a consultative sale, you want to see if they ask you questions, if they talk too much, if they're, if they're nervous, if they're not nervous, but being nervous is okay, but you need to know what level of, of nervousness or anxiety is being felt. And you need to see um, how it is that they would treat your clients. And what's the best way to do that? Role play. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I think the best way to know if all the either really good stuff that the salesperson's been telling you ahead of time or the bullshit <laughs> will come through in the role play. As some people will say to you, oh, I'm really good at being consultative. I ask all these great questions. And, and then you're sitting in the role play and they're selling you stuff. So mm -hmm. role play is key to understanding how the person 
applies all of the great things that they say that they do. Right. And some people say to me, oh, I hate doing role plays. I'm nervous. Well, you know, you have to do it. <laughs> um, so, and that's good too, because you're, 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 you're being put in an uncomfortable position. And if you're a salesperson that's doing business development, well, you need to know that. If it's mm -hmm. an account management position, you can do a different type of role play. If it's a farming type of, of, of job, you can do a different kind of role play. But role play really gives you, it's sort of like interviewing a hockey player and all you're asking them is, well, tell me about your slap shot. And, you know, <laughs> tell me how you tie your skates. Well, you know what? Get on the ice and <laughs> show me your stuff. So right. that's what you're doing with this. That's, I think, one of the best ways to interview a salesperson. You know, yeah. and this is very high level. So now I'm sure you have some comments and some some things you want to add in there. So I'll let you. Yeah. And it makes sense. Right. And even if I tie it back to the example I was given, obviously there's, there's the CV and, and, and there's what they say, but then there's also the behavioral stuff. So right, like, so this guy for RevOps was just about, are you, are you able to problem solve, you know, on this when nobody's asking you to problem solve. So you're doing the same thing kind of with the, the, um, the role play, the, the role play. Thanks. Um, so, so that makes, that makes sense. And so, but like, I can't argue with that. What I'm, what my question is though, like what I'm wondering what, as you're saying all this is like, where do people often fall, fall flat on like interviewers? Because I, I hear all you're saying and it's like, it makes sense. But then a lot of the sales hires that I've seen and some end up being great sales hires and, and that's okay. But it's just like, I've never seen that type of a process implemented it's usually like do you have sales experience do i like you good you know and we'll try you out and you know like usually sales people have especially at the beginning have very a lot of churn within the position because there's a lot of like we'll try you out and if after three months you're not good like you'll let go and then we'll find somebody else and then um but i'm not so where do you feel people usually fall flat when they're interviewing when they're interviewing sales people i think people usually fall flat because they don't do a role play um it's 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 a lot easier to say that you're good at something or explain success or explain your CV or talk about things you're being asked about when you're not being put to task. Mm. Um, you know, someone who has a CV that hasn't reached their objectives can think about it and tell you why they didn't get there. Um, whereas in a role play, you'll, you'll see how they actually interact. The other thing is you need to, and here's another really secret <laughs> part more than the role play is you, you've got to know if the person has a sales process. Um, because has a sales if, process. Yes. Like if, the salesperson has a sales process. Yeah. If they, if they, yeah. if they follow a process, like, do they ask certain questions at first? Do they have, um, you know, like if you were, if I was to interview you, well, you'd know what to say. You'd say, well, first I do preparation. I sort of find out, I do some web search, you know, I found out a decision maker is I prepare my conversation starter. You know, the first time you talk to someone, and then, you know, then I'm jumping into that first introduction call. So my, my, my uh, conversation starter, and then I find out, I start doing my discovery. I'm asking questions to find out what the challenges are, what the opportunity are. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to the motivation. Once I know the motivation, I understand fully what these people are trying to achieve. And then mm. I confirm the challenges that they have that I know I can solve. And then I go into my presentation and then it's a soft close because I reiterate, you know, are you willing to deal with me if I can present what you need? And then I close. Well, if someone comes up with a process like that, I mean, they're golden, right? right? But how often do you hear that? Oh, my sales process is I ask a few questions, I find out, and then I present and I close. Like you, you don't hear, a lot of people don't have that defined sales process. So they don't do the actions necessary. They don't, they haven't taken out of their mind what comes to most people a little bit naturally. The problem mm. with sales is that 50% of us are good at it naturally, but we don't know why. Mm. It's sort of like asking a linguist, uh, you know, if you stop me now and say, Paul, uh, do you put the verb before the noun, after the adverb, and where do you put the subject, and how do you build your, 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 your sentence structure? I'd say, I don't know, I just talk. <laughs> so your brain automatically does what everyone in linguistics analyzes is and how things work. Well, what you need to do in sales is do the same thing as, as linguistics does with language. And you need to figure out what's going on psychologically in the process of sales. And if you know mm -hmm. that, you might know that you're a little weaker at one point, need to work on different things. So in your interview process, if you're asking the person, 
sorry, in your interview, if you're asking them about their sales process, you will see how much they've put some thought into it. Now, mm. I've got to say to you, in the hundreds of people that I've interviewed or the thousands in the last few years, I've had maybe at one handful of people who've given me a good sales process. Does that mean there's only one handful of good salespeople? No, but you can judge from what level, how much of sales process do they really know? Now, talk about sales process. You do, um, you do an interview. I agree. But here's the other thing that we don't do. And, and, because often Wait, when you did I just pause you two seconds? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I know this is something that we don't do, and I'll try to remember what that is. And <laughs> so maybe that's a good teaser. But you know, you talked about the sales process and all that, which which makes sense, especially when I, I'm I'm assuming here that it makes sense when you're talking to a more senior salesperson, right? But what happens if you're hiring like a junior salesperson, maybe somebody who doesn't have a lot of sales experience or hasn't. Or it's maybe their first sales job, right? They're, they're out of if school. It's, if it's their first sales job, I'm okay that they don't have a sales process. If someone's mm. been working for more than a year and they don't have a sales process, if they've been working six months and they don't have a sales process, they're just winging it, then it's just natural ability. And then you've got to define whether they have the desire and the motivation yeah. and the intelligence to learn what it is you're going to have to teach them. And I guess it's also then up to you to have to understand you as a high, as a hire, as an interviewer and as a company, like, do I have what it takes to support this person? Because I've seen that. Like I work with a lot of startups and I've seen that, right? Startups don't have all these processes, right? Because they're brand new and they're just trying to live another day, right? And they hire these junior salespeople that just can't, they just don't have this, like they don't have the budget to hire a senior salesperson. So they hire a junior, but then a lot of these junior people are not, supported properly and so i think if you're hiring junior salespeople, it's also i'm guessing you need to have something in place to be able to support this young team even if it's like flexible and changing and all that stuff a big portion of the reason that sales to your point a big big portion of the reason that the new hires don't succeed in a newer greener place is that the onboarding process sucks right um, is that the remuneration package doesn't drive the behavior you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so those are things that are really important. The other thing that's important too, if we can come back to interviewing for a second, is that people think I'm going to interview the person once and I'm going to know whether they're good for my team or not. I hate to tell you, but that's not the truth. Mm -hmm. And I think 50% of that is your onboarding. Uh, sorry. 50% of it's onboarding and culture. And the other part, the other 50% fail is because you don't really take enough time to make sure it's the right person. So let's assume for a second, you're trying to hire a senior salesperson. Why not have them come into your office and, 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 and ride along or, or talk to the manager for half a day, you know, just to see if there's a culture fit. Mm. You know, do you, do you marry the girl the first time you meet her? Most of the time you don't. Do you marry the guy the first time you meet him? No. You know, you want to go on a few dates. You want to maybe go on a trip. You might even want to live with them for a year. Okay. I'm not saying you should live with a rep for a year, but maybe yeah. you can have them come into your office and spend half a day. Yeah. You know, I just had an experience with a client who um, I, I went a little bit outside my wheelhouse and I helped them hire someone in HR um, okay. to, to actually replace what I do for them as far as sales recruitment goes. So that's why I was involved because basically I was replacing my um, services as a sales recruitment for this company. Now, I don't do this for a lot of people. There's not a lot of people I do sales recruitment for, but with this person, I've done a lot. Um, we met that way many years ago and I kept doing it and I know exactly what he needs. So I've got the whole evaluation process and I would feed them. I said, look, I'm going to teach your HR person how to do this. And if it turned out that the person wasn't sure they wanted the job and he says, okay, come work with me for a week. And he got him to do some mundane tasks. He loved this candidate after the interview. Mm -hmm. After one week, they decided that both of them were going to part ways. Well, hey, was it the end of the world? No, he got a little bit of work done. He paid her for the work. She was happy. He gave her more time to think about it. And she knows what she wants to do. Is that the end of the world? No. So I'm thinking the interview process maybe should be more than an hour or two or three. And some mm -hmm. of the big firms do this. They'll have you come in five or six times and meet a bunch of different key people. And they'll have you do different simulations. They'll put you in different situations. They'll say, 
So first they'll see, do you have the intelligence? They'll do some kind of screening. Okay, you know, uh, Fab has what it takes to go past step one. You know, he's got an IQ over 80 and he's, um, that was funny, Fab, you're supposed to laugh. Um, he has an IQ over 80 and he has, you know, he filled out the, the first screenings properly. Now let's bring him in and we're going to put him through some, some tests. So you might have him put through a stress test. Like, what do you do when this happens? You know, ask some questions. Uh, you put him in a role play simulation with a client that has a problem to see if they're a good problem solver. So this is what some companies do really, really well. Now you might say to me, ah, it's just a small company. They don't have all this time and these resources to put into it. Well, if you don't, then you're taking more of a risk. You're, you're rolling the dice more. It's just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to be, you know, mindful also of the environment you're in. You know, I've seen a lot of people, maybe not in sales, sales roles specifically, but a lot of people, you know, if there's a lot of demand and, and the company that's asking somebody to come in six, seven times, you know, sometimes <laughs> get the good candidate because the other company is willing to go faster. Wow. But I am understanding that there is a risk factor, right? Like if you decide to, if, if that's how you do it, because you want to make sure you're right fit and you're willing to go at any other place that's just like quicker to hire, then, you know, there's, we're clearly not a good fit for each other. Right. Well, and, and, and that's the thing, Fab, if you have a Walmart approach, uh, then you're going to have a lot of churn. You're going to have a lot of turnover and the people aren't going to stay as long. If, if you're, and that's the risk you have to be willing to take, you know, if you're paying your, your salespeople, uh, a little bit less and you say, well, you know, I'm not sure they're going to want to do five or six, uh, different interviews with us because, you know, it's a sort of an entry level position. Well, then you're taking more risks. It's just the way it, you, you can't, you can't not take risk if you're not going to go through a more elaborate, um, um, interview process. Because it's really what it is. But, you know, even if you're hiring a junior salesperson, you can still have an evaluation. You can still you can still have a few conversations. You can do it in a shorter time span, but you can still figure it out. But you're still going to have turnover, particularly with young people that are figuring out themselves whether they are going to like what they do. They might have all the good intentions in the world to say, I love this job. And then you do it for a month and realize, oh, it's not really what I wanted to do. I'm going to go back to school or I'm going to go do something else. Yeah. That you know, can happen. And, and, but what you're trying to do is mitigate the risk. So first thing I would say is have some kind of screening process right from the front, a written screening process or um, some kind of evaluation of things that you want to know about them. Um, if you can put them, then when they, when they come in, put them through a role play, you know, put them in a real account situation, see how they react. That's how you're going to know. You know, when they're training a Marine, they don't say you do this, you do, that. they put them in the water and they, you know, they shoot guns around and they make it scary. So do the same thing, you know, put them in that real sales process, you know, right. play, play that worst a client possible when you're doing this and see how they react. You know, do they fall apart? Do, will they have the gumption to keep going? If they screw up, are they okay? Or they say, Hey, let's go it again. You know, you, you, you're going to see these characteristics. So you're looking, what are you looking for? You're looking for motivation or desire, and you're looking for intelligence. So if they have the desire to do the job and they have the intelligence, they're going to get there. That means they have the grit. Yeah. And that's what you're looking for. And they and, like the product and then they fit yeah. within your culture, you know? Well, so then you brought up culture, which is exactly what I wanted to bring in. Because I know you've mentioned it a few times, but you kind of glanced over it quickly. And I mean, to me, isn't that part one of the bigger success criteria? Obviously, if somebody fits within the culture, but is not, not motivated. No, maybe they're a better fit somewhere else, though, like within not within sales, but maybe they're better account managers or something like that. Um, but how do you, you know, how do you evaluate for culture? Fit? I, I actually think that's the easiest part because you talk to them, you if you have the culture and you get along with them and you talk about the same things when you say, well, I know they're going to get along with the people in the office because that's that's just getting that's that's. Um, that's more instinctive and more emotional. That's yeah. the culture. Like if they're, you know, if your if your office has, I remember there's an ad. If it was like a an ad for Monster.ca. Do they still exist? Monster.ca like ten years ago, and and the company had Naked Fridays, and I thought it was hilarious, you know. And they said, "Well, do you fit within this culture?" You know, and and you know, and the guy says, you know, a guy comes in dressed all straight, and he's like, he wasn't comfortable being naked on Fridays, but that's pretty obvious, right? So, if you're yeah. very casual, or you know, or, you know, 
people swear more today. So if you're in an environment that swears a lot, you don't swear, you might not like it. Uh, if people have certain desires, you know, they, they're all these super duper athletes. And they, so that's that the culture fit to me, you'll see right away. Cause you'll, you'll talk to the person and culture fit is often just communication. Do we not to be everyone the same, but do we like each other? Do we, you know, do we talk about coffee? Do we, do we, do we want to, do we want to say hi to each other every day? Or do we hate each other and going to go in our offices? Or, or do we have the super quiet stick to your own thing personality? And that might be okay too. You know, you want people mm -hmm. that are very quiet and independent and, and don't want to share too much. That's okay. Yeah. But you'll see that in the interview, you'll, you'll get that feeling, you know, they might all be, um, uh, you know, Bill Gates, Asperger types. That's okay. If everyone's the same and they get along, that's good. Or they might all yep. be the jock type and all will we'll work together and go play golf once in a while and, uh, you know, uh, whatever, uh, talk uh, soccer. Or it's a real sports culture. Well, then, okay, you, you talk sports with the guy and you see if he, had, he, he fits in or the girl, yep. you know. And, and the, to me, the cultural part is the easiest part. It's one of the most important parts, but that's the easy part. Yeah. And I think it's also a good indicator for you as an interviewer, like, what is your culture? I think like it's easy when you have a culture, right? When you know what the sales team looked like, but I think, or what the company looks like, because, because there's also those two things that I've seen. There's the sales culture, which is like the departmental culture. And then there's the company's culture, which can be different, right? Especially is I'm not going to say especially sales, but for sure sales job is unique compared to most other people in the organization. So they tend to, they often have, or sometimes have, a departmental culture that's very different and and at, at the same time you need to make sure that that's congruent right that those are both both are congruent like if you're all like like you mentioned the jockey sales type but then the rest of the company is all uh you know quiet and and, and then you know i think overall the sales team will have a, a difficult time operating within that, that company or the company will have a hard time operating with the sales team regardless it's not gonna end that, end that and, well. and, and i think fab that's why you see this in a lot of companies where there's a new ceo and he brings his executive team back in it, with him because you know he likes or he chooses the few people that he's inherited and decides whether they fit with him but often they'll they'll change. Like I saw this in, in a major enterprise I worked in, the CEO came in, he changed the whole executive team because he wanted right. his executive team. Yeah. And that's, that's culture, right? So he brings in, and then those people try to work, you know, they can't change all the employees, but they choose the employees that fit the culture that you're trying to look for. So yeah. you're entirely right. I mean, it has to, yeah. Yeah. So if I can recap on the fly, I think, you know, maybe not in order of, but in, in definitely your priorities is understand or know your culture, right? So that you, when you're talking to the person, you'll know if they have a fit. You'll uh, screen a pre-interview screening of some sorts, right? Um, definitely uh, not use cases, definitely a role plays to try to put them in the situation that you're in. Uh, so in sales, it's a, it's a role you can play. Do, but... You can do use cases too. You can also do uh, case studies, you know? Yeah. You can ask them, how would you react to this? You know, client does this, does that. What do you say? You know, and you, you yeah, that, but that's part of role play for me. That's, that's part of, you know, um, yeah. reality. Yeah. And then, you know, understand that the more time you take to interview somebody, the, the more risk, more risk medication you have. Yeah. So if you want to go fast, that's fine, but there's a higher risk. And I think the last one, which you kind of briefly touched on, but it was also crit critically important is like also the post interview, right? You're onboarding. Uh, your onboarding can't just be like, this is how HubSpot works. Okay, bye now. <laughs> you know, like uh, it has to go beyond that. I mean, and 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 that's, I think, something that we can talk about for another another. Yeah, time. I think that that's a whole other podcast on how to properly integrate, because I think then you you can you can <laughs> you can really bring a lot of value to that conversation on the whole RevOps side. And then we can talk about the whole onboarding process, how to make sure that the people are are learning uh, your tools. And that's something that, that super important as well. Yeah. And I mean, knowing your sales, pro like they have their own sales process, but it's also understanding how their view of sales is matching it. Like, cause tactically speaking, you, you know, while you're going through the similar stages, tactically speaking, you know, there's definitely similarities. If they used to work with Salesforce and now you're working with HubSpot or if they, if you're working with pipe drive and they used to work with Salesforce, you know, there'll, there'll be differences in how things get done. Um, Awesome. Onboarding. You're on the books for an onboarding conversation. Yes. And you're on the books for the, how to do the rev ops part of the onboarding. Awesome. Cool. All right, Paul. Ciao. Yeah, fab. <laughs>